Hi, Floss Tube friends. Welcome to my channel. My name is Chris, and today is Friday, April 28, 2023. I am here today to uh, share my April stitching with you. So let's just jump right in. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, my focus projects. So I have four focus projects every month, a small, a medium, a medium, large, and a large project. So my small focus project is the uh, Year in Chalk by Hands-On Design. I've done a number of these. If you've watched some of the past videos, you will have seen them. But I was up to the month of March um, and I started and finished this one this month. So this is being done on a 32 count gunmetal gray by Weeks Dye Works, which is a called for fabric, although they called for 30 count, which I wasn't able to get. So I just went with 32. I did change it a tiny bit. You can see in the model, there's these little stitches in here. I elected not to do that. I don't like carrying the white thread at the back of the black fabric because you can sometimes see that through there. And I was not about to do 30 pin stitches um, to put those little dots in there. And I wasn't sure that it needed it anyway. So I just elected to keep it clean and simple and just leave it like that. So that is the month of March. Um, and then I did get started on uh, the month of April, which is Hello Spring, but I just have a little start on this. And pardon the dangling thread. I started this when I went on a road trip with my sister and she was in an appointment. So I just stayed in the car and stitched and that's how much I got done and stopped mid-thread, so so just a little start. So I didn't get quite as many of those done this month. Last month, I don't know, I was just flying through them, but I've been distracted by some other other uh, hobbies lately, so maybe haven't done quite as much stitching as I have done in the past. So, so if you remember last month, I finished my uh, medium focus piece, which was Shooting Stars. And so I've um, started a new medium piece, which is called uh, the Stallion, which is a pattern I got off of Etsy from a designer called Anna Duplant, um, which I'll have all that information in the drop down box down below if you're curious. But here's a picture of what it will look like when it's finished. And I'll put in a picture of where it was the last time you saw it. And this is where it is now. So this pattern, um, it was kind of interesting when I purchased it and downloaded it. Uh, I found it um, kind of neat that the designer not only had sort of like the standard chart with all the symbols on it, but she gave you a chart for each individual color. And so that sparked me to consider trying color completing which I haven't normally done before but because she just made it so easy to do that I thought I would give it a try um, and I have been taking a picture almost I think every time when I complete a color and I put them together like, kind of like a slideshow and I will put that in at the end of the video if you're curious and want to see up to this point um, but yeah so I hope when it's finished I'll have the whole slideshow going from nothing to, you know, and as each color is added sort of thing. But so yeah, I think I, this month I finished a color that was a fairly, there's a lot of stitches in that color. I, I finished it. Um, I'd started it the last time I worked on it, but I finished it and then I've um, completed two more colors, I think. So I've maybe done three colors this month. I think there's still like 11 or 12 left. So Anyway, so that's fun watching that come together. Uh, so then my, oh, I should mention too that this piece was one of my Sunday stitches as well. Um, I did spin my whip wheel and this is actually the one that came up randomly. And I just decided to work on it because that was at the beginning of the month and I hadn't worked on it yet. So I thought it'd be fun just to get started um, before it came up in the rotation. So then my medium large, which I'm just working on now and hope to put a few more stitches in today. And yeah, I think last month, if you watched that video, I think I said I was gonna work on 
work on this piece after the video and I was hoping for a page finish and like <laughs> we're all so delusional sometimes <laughs> but like there was no way I was going to finish that page that night. there's a lot of stitches in this piece so um, I have got the page finished now but let me back up a little bit and I'll show you a picture of what it will look like when it's finished and then here's where I was the last time you saw it and here is where I am now so I was working down here and so I finished that um, big house that big pinky red house there in the middle last month and those four little birds down at the bottom so now I'm over here starting the last and final page so I've worked on that tree trunk coming down the side I've worked on those two little Santas you can see there's some presents down there at the bottom so um, oh and I also did this little tree here this red house was already done before but so there's a couple more houses in here and then I think there's some more deer in here and there's a great big tree down in this corner down here but I'll back up a little bit so you can kind of see the whole thing sort of so yeah it's very cool so I believe when I finish this my plan is um, I don't think I'm gonna frame it because it's a big piece and it's something I wouldn't have out all year round. So I don't think I want to invest in having it professionally framed. And I, I, like I'd never be able to frame this myself, I don't think. I don't know. But my plan is I think I'm going to turn it into a wall hanging um, that I can just hang up at Christmas time and then pack away when the season's over. So I'm getting close. Um, I'm not going to make any predictions because obviously I can't judge how many stitches are left and how fast I can stitch them but but yeah it's getting close it's getting close and that's a really old whip so it will feel really good to get that one finished so and then my last focus piece my large is everybody's favorite including mine and it is the piece called behind the bit which is um a pattern by yeah I'm doing a really bad job sorry sorry guys I haven't mentioned like fabrics or flosses or designers so let me back up a tiny bit so yes, I did heart and hand and what I was doing in that one, but, um, and I did the designer on this one, Anna Duplant, but this is done on an 18 count oatmeal Ada with all of the called for DMC. This Christmas Village is by Sarah Guramali. I believe that's how her name is pronounced. Um, I'll put it down here on the screen. Um, this is on, I think it's a 28 count lamb's wool linen with all of the called for DMC. So behind the bit, here's a picture of what it will look like when it's done. It's a pattern by White Willow Stitching. I think that's right, White Willow Stitching, White Willow Stitching. Um, I'm stitching this on an 18 count oatmeal Ada, same as the other, other horse with all the called for DMC. And here's where it was the last time you saw it. And here is where it is. So I've just done a little bit more on his chest there. So that's the bottom where you see it sort of finishes bluntly at the bottom of those um, columns. And uh, that's two columns there that's there. So, and they actually span two pages. So I'm, I'm just stitching a column and I'm going down the full two pages right to the bottom is how I've been stitching it. So. So yeah, I'll probably pick him up tomorrow and put a few more stitches in before the end of the month. Um, and then start the rotation over at the beginning of May. So those are all of my focus projects. The other project I've been working on is my temperature cell. It's by Apricot Polka Dot. And um, the details are listed in the drop down box down below. I think I have a before picture. If I do, I'll put it in here. And if I don't, I apologize. But here is where we are now. So you can see we had a little bit of a hot spell here in Ontario where all those oranges and <laughs> reds are for a few days. It like, 
it went from early spring to summer and now it's gone back to a fairly normal spring you can see over here um, we're getting more like these more greenies yellows and greens but uh, but yeah those reds and oranges that's not usual for this time of year so that's kind of fun to see and I do realize that um, for me I think this is the kind of temperature style I like that it's all just pure color because that's the fun part I think is seeing the color changes so those other ones I was trying to do and again I won't go into that but if if you missed that video it's a couple videos back but I kept waffling about what temperature charts I wanted to do and originally I was doing two that had a lot of what I'm calling framework like a lot of stitching that you had to do around the colors or I wanted to do all of the stitching ahead of time if possible but for various reasons I found that wasn't working for me and I think part of it was, I don't think you could appreciate the color changes quite as effectively as you can in something like this, where each of these hearts is just one day and the temperature for that day. And you can really see the flow of the colors. So, you know, I'm enjoying this so much. I was debating that if I did do another one next year, I might even just do the same one or one again, that is just pure color, that there's not a framework around it, that you just see the colors change. but. But yeah, I'm still really enjoying, I'm, I'm enjoying stitching on this fabric. I'm really loving the color palette that the designer provided. I did tweak it a little bit, um, but most of the colors are her colors that she picked. And I just really like how they flow together. But yeah, so that's my temperature chart. So then um, my Sunday stitches. So as I said, one Sunday I just worked on Stallion and actually another Sunday, I chose to finish that hands-on design year in chalk, the March, the month of March. I spent a Sunday just finishing that one up to get it done. Um, but I did spin my wheel the last couple of weekends. So um, my, my uh, pattern that I stitched on recently, Whip It, um, I'll show you what it looks like here. It's by Awesome Pattern Studio. I actually stitched, I think, on him last month as well, but he came up on the, the random spin again and I'm happy to work on him again. So. I pulled him out. Um, here's where he was the last time you saw him. I'm stitching him on a bit of a mystery linen. It's a 28 count, um, but I and it's called Time, but I'm not sure who the dyer is. And I've done a color conversion for him. So um, it is all stitched in DMC, but I changed the colors from the pinks and purples to just some more natural colors. And that's where he is now. Just got a little bit more done, not a lot, but so he's coming along. And then my last um, Sunday stitch was just this past Sunday, and the wheel picked Do Not Worry by Silver Creek Samplers. I think that's what it's called. This I'm stitching on a 32 count picture this plus legacy linen with the called for DMC. I'll put a picture here of where it was the last time you saw it. And here is where it is now. So not a tremendous amount more. I've just started across that block that has the uh, word worry in it. And oh, I filled in a little bit of the yellow of not and the N and the O. But yeah. So that's a fun little stitch. So yeah, that's everything that I worked on this month. Again, I didn't get quite as much stitching done this month. Last month I seemed to be really productive and got a lot done. But as I said, there was sort of some other pursuits that sort of took some of my time. So, but I still, I think, made some pretty decent progress. So, um, so yeah, so, uh, Today I'm going to work on Christmas Village a little bit more, try and get a few more stitches in that. Tomorrow I will switch back and work on um, Behind the Bit. Uh, usually I work like, like 1 to 7, 8 to 15, 16 to 21, 22 to 28. Like those are my, instead of doing Monday to Friday, I'm doing the actual dates, the actual numbered days. 
So my rotations finish on the 28th. So then the 29th, 30, 31st are kind of open days. So I've chosen to use those days to work on my largest projects because they're obviously going to take the longest to do just to give them a little bit of extra love. So, so yeah, I'll work on um, behind the bit tomorrow. I'll get a few days in and then Sunday I'll do another spin of my whip wheel. See what comes up. And yeah, and then next month, just carry on with the rotation as I've been doing because it seems to be working really well for me. Um, so that's all that I have as far as stitching, but I do have a little bit of happy mail that I thought I would share with you today. Uh, I still have been visiting one of the buy and sell groups. Well, I should say I was visiting one of the buy and sell groups and kept finding little treasures that um, I thought I needed. So I've kind of put myself on um, timeout <laughs> from that group because <laughs> I think I, I need to break that that habit of going on there and going, ooh, I like that, ooh, I like that. <laughs> that. But I did get a few things before I cut myself off. So I'll show you what I did and what I did get from there. So um, one of them is this fun little kit. So it's for this little uh, basket. I just thought it was a really pretty picture. And it actually comes with a little wooden frame and the fabric and the flosses. Um, I didn't realize when I purchased it, but somebody had already started it. And it looks like they did this little gritting that I'm probably going to remove because it's just on the floss. And I don't want that to get stuck in there. So, um, but I'm not sure whether I'll take this out or just leave it. I have to look at it under the magnifier. The other thing I didn't realize when I purchased it, that it's over one. And interestingly enough, it doesn't tell you anywhere in the instructions that it's one over one. Uh, but I did the calculations for how, what size it needs to be to fit in here. Because I was, I was hoping maybe the person started at one over one, but didn't need to. Maybe it was supposed to be one over two. But no, it needs to be one over one to fit in this frame. So, um, so yeah, I'll have to sort of sort that out what I'm going to do. But, uh, but yeah, I just thought it was really cute. And I love this little this little frame and since I'm on my little miniature kick after stitching my little uh, miniature farm scenes here this is like a little miniature that I thought would be fun to stitch so hope to do that someday um, another one I picked up was this old uh, Lenart chart it's from 1991 and so yeah this is one of the Marjolein Bastien um, pictures, artwork, um, of this watering can with the bird and the butterfly. And I just thought that was really pretty. So I thought I'd scoop that one up. And, um, actually this one, this chart I found on, um, Etsy. Again, another Lenard chart, but I'd never seen this before. And I just thought it was a really pretty picture of a mare in full because that's a fairly typical, you'll see them uh, running like that or trotting like that with the foal right beside the mare. So that was fun. And then the last one that I purchased, which was quite a score, in my opinion, is this Glendon Place chart, um, Flowers of the Holy Night, I believe it's called. Um, I have seen my friend Dina, half stitch, cross stitch. Hi, Dina. Uh, she stitched this and it's just beautiful. And I fell in love with it when she was stitching it and um, thought I would like to stitch it someday. And it came up on my buy and sell group, but not just the chart, but it came up as, as um, I guess, a kit. It doesn't have any fabric in it, but the call for fabric is just an antique white, um, which is pretty easy to buy. But it comes with all of the silks, these beautifully variegated silks, and all of the beads and the treasures that you need to complete it. Um, so I couldn't pass it up because I, I looked it up and I think if I was to go and purchase this, um, all of these silks, all of these beads and the, the chart, it would have cost me double, probably more than double what I paid buying it through the buy and sell group. So I was really excited 
to discover that and purchase that. And I look forward, um, I am gonna, I'm planning to start this probably um, in December of this year. Um, I just need to order in the fabric. But yeah, so that one, I was really excited about that. So that is all of my happy mail. So that's kind of it, I guess, as far as the stitching portion of my video goes. I have two other segments that I usually like to do. One is um, kind of like what I've been sewing, um, either for myself or things that I'm putting up in my Etsy shop. And the other one is fun finds on Instagram. So if you're just here for the stitching, um, that's it. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. But if you're curious and wanna see some of the other things, then stick around and I will share those with you. So let's start with what I've been sewing. So last month I had shown you a project folder that I had made uh, for myself. And I have gone ahead and made a, another one. So it looks like this. With this really pretty bluey green and brown. Um, they have a magnetic closure. And this is the inside of this one. So there's a vinyl pocket here. And this is a little pocket here that you can stick your pattern or your fabric or whatever in. The one I made for myself, I put a floss organizer on this side, but this one I just decided to make without that just to see how it went. And um, in case somebody wanted to purchase it that doesn't use bobbins, they wouldn't want that bobbin holder anyway. So, um, and yeah, so that is up my shop and actually it, <laughs> it just sold today. So. Sorry if I'm showing you something, but I, I do plan on making some more in the future, I think, so. But yeah, so that's the project folder. Um, so that blue fabric, uh, which I just love, it's so pretty. It was kind of like the end of a bolt, so I just bought what they had left. So I also had made some vinyl front bags to go in my Etsy shop. So one of them is sold, but this one is not. This one's still available, so it's so pretty. And I actually made myself um, one of my patchwork bags. I've made a lot of these patchwork bags and I've never kept any, but I really like them. So I finally thought, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep this one. So again, it has the pretty blue fabric on the back. And then I've done these two inch squares on the front. And then the other thing I've been working on this week uh, are my magnifier covers that I make. So I make covers for lighted magnifiers. So again, using the same fabric. This is for a travel size magnifier. Um, it just slips on and then you just pull the drawstring. There's a little toggle here to hold it tight. So that'll sit on your light and protect your light getting scratched from getting dusty from the sunlight shining through it and these are all completely reversible so if you wanted to change or you might like the other fabric better you can just turn it inside out and put it on that way so those are for the uh, the smaller ones again usually the travel size ones here's another small one that I made this really pretty pink fabric and it's got a hot pink grunge type fabric on the inside. So I have about, I think 10 of these small ones up in the shop now and 10 of the large ones. So here's the larger ones. So these are for the floor stands. Um, and actually I'll stick a picture in here, kind of like what it looks like, just so you have an idea. So yeah, like that, that's the small one and this is the large one. So they kind of just fit on there to cover it. So, and again, this one is the brown on the inside. And they have these cute kitties. And the reverse on this one is really pretty floral print. Like so. so yeah, they're just kind of fun because you can reverse them. The other neat thing about them is they're just done with a pattern actually for a drawstring bag. So, you know, you can use them as a like a reusable gift bag you know for a smaller gift or even just to store stuff if you wanted to because again they're just a a drawstring drawstring pouch like that 
But anyway, that's what I've been working on this week. So that was a lot of cutting and sewing and I think about 114 photographs later, they're all up on my Etsy shop now. Which again, is linked down below if you're curious. Um, but uh, obviously no pressure. I'm not here to try and push my Etsy shop or um, get sales from people. I just like to share what I've been working on, so. So, um, oh, there goes my pen. That's, that's what I've been working on lately. Um, so let's go to fun finds on Instagram. Um, so yeah, I was on Instagram the other night and uh, my friend Chloe from Australia um, posted this picture and she purchased these frames from a company called Modern Hoopla. And I had heard of this company before. I kind of forgot about them though until I saw Chloe's picture. And I, th I thought, oh, I'm gonna go to their website and check out what they have. So um, yeah, so they make these beautiful wooden frames that are all cut out by a um, computer controlled uh, router, I think. Um, the owner of the company's name, I think, is Kate. And um, I signed up for a newsletter. So she shared some of the background about how she does the stuff. So I believe the, the computer cuts them out, but she hand sands everything and stains it all herself. So she puts a lot of love into these frames. And they're beautiful. So you can see there's like a lot of different sizes um, and shapes you know there's round and there's square and I think on her website I saw some oval ones so and in Chloe's picture she had like a three opening one um, so yeah so so lots of different variety there and then also lots of different um, like finishes uh, like some of them are just the natural wood some of them are more reddish some are the walnut stain I think there's some ones that are more black. Um, so yeah, lots of options for what you want. And as beautiful as the front of those frames are, it's the back of them where the magic happens. So here's a picture of what the back of them looks like. So these are routered out specifically to fit a hoop in the back, um, which I think is so ingenious. You know, so many people are uncomfortable or just don't want to stress about trying to lace or pin you know their their stitching to frame it and this is a simple alternative right you put it in a hoop which everybody can do that and then just put the hoop in the frame and it's done you hang it on the wall and I also thought like I know there's a few designers that have some circular seasonal type patterns and I was thinking well wouldn't that be fun to stitch those you just put them all in hoops and then each month or season or whatever, uh, it'd be really easy to switch them out of the back of that frame and hang it on the wall. Um, so yeah, so really, really cool. While I was there though, I was looking around because she has other things as well. Um, I think one of the uh, fun things I saw were these little hoop stands that she makes. And so these allow you, if you don't want to put it your your project in a frame but you have it in a hoop you can prop it in one of these hoop stands and put it like on a table or a shelf or something like that um and yeah she's got those in all the different finishes which i thought was really fun um oh she also makes these uh really cool orc containers which um i think are just really fun they're to me they're really aesthetic so if you had them sitting you know in your room they look like a piece of art really because all your different colored thread ends are, are in there and um, it looks like there's little clips on the back so once it's full or at the end of the year or whatever you can take the back off take the, the, the thread ends out and do whatever you wish with them and start over again um, but I thought that was really uh, clever too and, and a really unique thing although with that hole in there I was, I was wondering if my cat would be sticking her foot in that hole trying to get the uh, thread ends out thread ends out of there I'm not sure um and then the the, the last thing I was going to share that I found on her website or um she makes these floss racks I think she calls them so um one of the ones she has are these clothespin ones which again I think is ingenious I, I just saw this recently somebody else doing this and I know it's not new I think it's as old as time that people have maybe done that with their flosses but I just 
either hadn't seen it or forgot that I'd seen it or, or whatever. But it is a really, uh, I think, fun and cool way to store your floss. So yeah, if you're somebody that likes to do that with a safety pin, um, she has this little stand that you can you know, put on the table beside you while you're working and just have your colors sitting in there uh, to easily have them at hand. And she even makes a wall rack for those that, I guess you just take the little wooden stands off and then put them back on the wall rack to keep them up of the way. And then you can have multiple ones there for all of your colors. Um, she also makes them for the spools. So I guess for the sulkies, or I know some of the silks, I think, come on spools. So that was fun. But then, of course, the bobbin one, right? That's the one I'm attracted to because I like to bobbinate all my floss. And so I saw this floss, um, this bobbin minder, I think she called it. And I thought, oh yeah, I need one of those. So, so I purchased one. So here it is. It's got the magnet here, a really nice, strong magnet. So that's great, great to sit my needle there when I need to change threads. I've got a few of my flosses here, in here that I'm um, from uh, Christmas Village. So I'm usually working with three or four different colors at a time. And so I just keep them in here until I don't need that anymore. And then I put it back in my, um, my bobbin organizer and grab an, a couple other ones. Because before this, I would just set those bobbins on the table beside me, but I was forever like knocking them off the table and then I'd have to get out of my chair and climb underneath it to find where the bobbin went or the cat would be down there trying to shoot it around sort of thing. So this is working perfectly for me to just set these up in here. They're standing up. I can see them nicely. I can see the colors nicely and it's just working really, really well for me. And uh, so I am just really enjoying this. So yeah, that is my bobbin minder. My great find. So yeah, I'll link their website down below if you want to go check it out. Um, you know, I, I won't lie, this stuff isn't cheap, but when you think that, uh, you know, a lot of the manufacturing of them is hand done, um, and they're, to me, they're all little works of art. They're like, they're quite beautiful and aesthetically pleasing. Uh, I was, I, I was fine. I was happy to pay the money. To get it so um so yeah that is what i have to share with you this month if there's any questions about anything if i've left something out um or um was confusing <laughs> in uh something i shared feel free to ask questions and uh until next time i'll see you bye